Good evening, everyone. It's Warren. Good evening, Warren. Good evening, everyone. Um, just waiting for Pat to join. It looks like she's having a little difficulty getting in the room, so we'll okay momentarily. Welcome, everyone. Good evening, everyone. We're just waiting for the chair to join. She was having a bit a uh, few technical issues, so she should be in momentarily. Thank you. That's okay. We have time. It's 7.04. As um, Ms. Hilton? Yes, good evening, Mr. Boyd. I see that there's supposed to be a presentation. Um, yes. And so I wanted to find out will we be able to obtain any documents that the presenters will be providing for this presentation? Um, I'm assuming thereafter. We haven't uh, seen the presentation ourselves yet. So this will be up first interaction with the presentation, but I'm sure we'll be able to get a copy for you after. Okay. That would Thank be you. More and sure as thing. always, we anticipate that there will be questions that they can't answer. Um, um, but, definitely. Um, if there's questions uh, from the community that cannot be answered during the course of this meeting, of course, you guys all have the email address for the community board office. We will compile them and submit them after the fact so that we don't extend the session tonight with questions that need additional follow-up that can't be provided right now. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, Mia, we'll wait till 710 because uh, looking at the agenda, I can start the meeting off and they can begin a presentation. But I'm, sure assuming that, Pat, I'm, I'm assuming Pat will be on by then. Yeah. I'm okay. going to reach out to her right now to see what's going on behind the scenes. Thanks. All right. Thank you.
One other thing, uh, Ms. Hilton. Is sure. this um, presentation in connection to a uh, land use application? Um, there is the application is not being reviewed tonight. It's an overview of uh, the prospective development of 975 No Strip. Is there an anticipation of a ULIP application? Yes. And will they be talking about what that anticipation is? The, uh, an overview of the site will be given tonight, but the application itself is not being reviewed by the committee at this time. Okay, has a ULIP application been filed in this case? Yes, I, I believe so. Hold on, let me not misspeak. Sorry for that. Um, I can follow up for you and touch base with you tomorrow. Okay. Okay, let me just um, define what today's meeting is about. It, it, they're building as of right. Uh, what this is, is an application for a fresh market with the implication being if the fresh market is approved, they get an extra story on the building. So we are not reviewing the total project, we're reviewing the part that deals with EULA. It's not a EULA application. You. A fresh program is not a part of a EULA application. Well, whatever it is, we have to approve it. No, you do not have to approve okay, it. Okay, Alicia, call the office tomorrow and discuss it. Well, Thank you. Um, I'm no, so no, sorry, Ms. Ms. If Ms. Warren, if you do not know what you're talking about, then you should not. Can someone just cut her out? Um, okay. actually, Ms. Boyd what? and Mr. Burke, um, Ms. Moses is having a technical issue, so she will be in. If you would like to convene sure. the meeting board and move forward, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the meeting. I'm Warren Burke. I'm the vice chair of the ULA committee, as well as vice first vice chair of community board nine. Um, as usual, the rules of CB9 uh, in terms of decorum will be followed and they are on the website if we need them. So to start off the meeting, we have representatives from the Hudson Company or the PR firm. And as I said before, the purpose of this ULA procedure is not to review the whole project, the building as of right. It's to do the, it's to review the fresh market. So, uh, so who's here from Hudson? Who's doing the presentation? Hi, Warren. My name is Marley Bushing Trustot, and I'm from Hudson. I'm a development director, and I'm joined by my colleague, Sally Gilliland, who is a principal at the Hudson Companies and uh, Berka Kalamoglu, who is a project, senior project. Terrific. Well, welcome and proceed. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us tonight. We appreciate you taking the time to hear about our project. Um, and I'd also like to add that uh, in addition to the team from Hudson, we are joined by Pablo Espinal, um, whose name may be familiar to you all. Uh, he was the uh, operator of the Associated Supermarket that uh, was on the site and he will be returning as the operator of the new supermarket that will be in the base of the building. So um, he will be available um, also for any questions, um, but we will go ahead and get started. Uh, I will be sharing my screen. Uh, it says the host disabled participant screen sharing. Um, I just made you a co-host, so you should be able to share now. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sure thing. Okay, everybody see that? Yep. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so just a little bit about Hudson to start and our experience in the uh, sort of Crown Heights Prospect Lefferts community. Um, Hudson has been in business for uh, over 36 years now. And along the way, we've developed uh, nearly 8,000 units of residential housing. Um, and many of those units are affordable housing. Uh, we really run the gamut all the way from uh, shelter development all the way to luxury condos. Um, but our sweet spot is affordable and workforce housing. Um, and you may be familiar for, for, uh, with us from our other work in the neighborhood. Uh, we have the park line at 626 Flatbush, 
and um, the Lois and the Clark, both on Clarkson Avenue, which are just outside the community board, literally across the street from the uh, community board boundary. Um, so we are committed to this neighborhood and um, we have, uh, you know, tried to be um, a good neighbor and thoughtful in the development that we've done here to date and um, look forward to continuing that with our project at 975 Nostrand. Um, so I'm sure all of you are aware of where 975 Nostrand is, but just a map uh, illustrating exactly what the site looks like. Um, it's this sort of funny trapezoidal piece of land, um, which uh, was obviously the longtime home of the associated supermarket, but also um, was underutilized in terms of Brooklyn land standards. Uh, it was an oversized surface parking lot and a really great site to bring residential uh, housing uh, without dis, uh, displacing any um, existing residents. Um, so I think as was sort of noted in the discussion uh, before we officially started, uh, this is an as of right development, it's mixed use. This is just some sort of schematic mapping showing uh, the form that the project will take on our funnily shaped piece of land. Um, it'll be, two sort of wings uh, on top of a common podium. And the common podium is the ground floor and it spans the entire site. Um, and the supermarket will occupy um, over a third of the whole ground floor and will be located uh, at the northern end of the site, face fronting on no strand and actually extend all the way back to close uh, and our storage will be at the back, which uh, we can see here. Uh, so this is the uh, sort of fresh schematic that um, Pablo has prepared with his supermarket designers. We've been working together um, since we acquired this project um, and you know are trying to make sure that there is a good space for the supermarket and it will be modernized and um, will allow for all of the things that the residents were accustomed to or the residents of the area were accustomed to seeing. Um, it's going to be approximately 21,000 square feet. As I mentioned before, it's going to take up a significant portion of the ground floor of the building. Um, Pablo is going to be the owner of the supermarket, uh, the operator, um, and uh, also, as noted, this is a fresh application with city planning. Um, so we have submitted our application to city planning, and it is currently in review. Um, um, atop the uh, atop the common podium, uh, we're going to have a residential building um, with 328 units, uh, ranging from studios to three bedrooms. And uh, as noted, this is an as of right project. Um, it is 421A option C, we vested last summer. Um, and so we are still working out what the um, income brackets will be. Um, I will note that at our other projects, both of the, our projects on Clarkson um, are the same program. And we were actually able to, um, target a wider income bracket than what the program officially allows, meaning we didn't just uh, set our rents at 130% AMI, we consciously made an effort to widen that bracket and um, we set them at about 100% AMI at each of those projects. So we could encourage more people to apply and also make the uh, So we were sort of calling neighborhood retail. Uh, and then there is a 770 square foot community facility. Um, and as this is a fresh application, oh, sorry, I think I may have cut out a little bit. I apologize. Um, I was just describing the other parts of the building program, um, which is the neighborhood retail and then also community facility. 
um, as this is a fresh application uh, with doing the fresh supermarket, um, the program allows for an additional height and square footage uh, bonus. So this uh, illustration shows the additional height that we would be getting uh, and the zoning area, which is about 13,000 additional square feet. And uh, we're doing a 21,000 square foot supermarket, but only asking for an additional 13,000 square feet for the building. And then just a quick timeline. Um, so we commenced construction last summer. We're looking at about a three-year construction schedule or duration. Uh, and then we will be getting lease up immediately thereafter with occupancy, 100% occupancy for June 2027. Um, and so that's just the quick overview for the. Marley, you are cutting that. out again. Um, Warren, I'll turn it back to you for however you. I'm sorry about that. Um, Sorry about that. Um, that's all for the presentation. So I'm just saying I'll turn it back to Warren um, or whatever's next. Okay, thank you very much. Um, does Pablo want to say anything? Pablo? Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Hello, everyone. Hi, Pablo. How you doing? Good to see you. Or, good, good, good. I, I can't, so I can't see you. What's your take on this whole thing? Oh. Um, I'm sorry. No problem. Um, what was the question again? Um, in terms of the supermarket that you're getting, okay, do you have any comments on it? Is it... Is, what it's going to be like? Is it going to be bigger, better, whatever? Um, Let me start this, with this. Is the contract signed between you yes. and Hudson? Yes. Okay. So could you just give us a description of what it's going to be like, please? Um, it's going to be the same size retail. Retail is going to be the same size. Um, and like Marley said, it's going to be newer. Um, going to make it, it look very nice and comfortable for the neighborhood. And you know, we're just going to continue what we was doing, um, having um, all the the items that the customers are looking for. Um, what is your lease? Uh, term. Excuse me, excuse me, Miss Boyd. It's not time for questions yet. Thank you. Uh, so, Pablo, well, Pablo, do you have anything else you want to add? Um, no. So again, just, I'm happy that uh, okay. we. Okay, Miss Boyd, are... please. Okay, wait, let's just follow the rules of order, please. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you, Pablo. So just to redefine this, um, this is an application for a fresh market. Um, I believe that Pablo's contract, he said, is signed. And Pablo, you could, you don't have to answer any questions that you feel are, you know, improper. Okay. So now we're open for questions. And we'll do that by raising hands, please. Me, could you call on the people? I can, I'm here on my phone. Sure thing. I see uh, Miss Boyd and I see Mr. Thomas after. Pablo, what is your, your term of your lease? Um, well, I'm not sure if I'm able to speak about that. Um, and why do you feel like you're not able to speak about it? The community has a right to know how long you plan on being there. I mean, we fought for you to come back, if you do remember that. 
And yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that you but, came back when we wanted to know what was your, how long do you plan on being in, at the supermarket? Is it five years? Is it ten years? Is yeah. it twenty Pablo, years? if you're not if you're not comfortable answering Excuse me, Warren, questions, you don't I'm have asking to. him. I'm not asking you. I know he gave you an answer. Excuse me, Warren. You were already directing him before I asked the question. Well, so let me the just question say that again, you, you again, you, again. Oh, you foreshadowed it by busting in, okay? So it's up to Pablo. Pablo, if you would like to answer that by all means. If not, Alicia could ask the office tomorrow and we'll find out. Very rude. Is so, so, isn't he so rude? I mean, it's just ridiculous that he could actually even. I'm not being rude. I'm just doing the, the, I'm just trying to guide this meeting to the questions at hand of the subject. I'm not being rude at all. Um, Pablo, again, I'm asking you, what is the term of your lease? How long do you plan well, on being right. there? We have 15 lease with two options of five. So, so 25 years. Oh, great. Great. That's Thank you. That's what we're, we're trying to figure out, if you're going to be a long-term uh, tenant there and that we or please if you when you do the option of five that means that they have the option to increase your rent after the five or the or to maintain what you currently would be no there will, there will be an increase there will be an increase mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay are you are you comfortable with the terms <laughs> yeah yeah yes good, good. Thank you, Ms. Boyd. I have Mr. Thomas next, uh, then Valerie, uh, then Mr. Wolfling, and then uh, Ms. West at all. Thank you. Mr. Thomas, you have to unmute yourself. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'd like to know if the parking lot is for the tenants or for the supermarket uh, uh, buyers? Um, we currently have an underground parking lot with um, about 175 spaces and we anticipate that it'll be attended parking, um, both for residents of the building. If there's uh, not enough demand, it, we anticipate it would be open to the wider community and also for the supermarket use. So the, the supermarket does not have uh, a defined parking area? That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Miss mm -hmm. uh, Fleming. Good evening. Um, that was my question as well, because um, as massive as your facility is, um, in consideration of the convenience and the neighbors in our community that some type of parking um, is reasonable, I would think. So is there any consideration of reserving some type of parking for us as um, we go forward with this venture here? Ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry, I came on late. I don't remember your name or I didn't get your name, the developer. Yes, my name is Marley Bushing and thank you for your question. Um, we understand how important that, that it is to the community and um, any sort of operations would be by the parking operators. So I can't say specifically how that would work at this time, but we're confident that there are more than enough parking spaces in the garage. There's over twice as many as were uh, previously on site. So we're confident that we will be able to accommodate the needs of um, both the uh, shopping population and the resident population of the building. Okay, so you're saying that there will be parking available because we didn't incur a fee because it's sounding like there's a fee-based opportunity for you to increase in value, I guess. Uh, it would be uh, underground attended parking and yes, we would anticipate that it would be for a fee. Okay, and you mentioned that your project will be 100% completion in 2027, is that correct? That's what we're currently projecting for our 100% occupancy. 
So when do you project the grocery facility will be available? Um, Pablo, I'm not sure if you have a construction timeline worked out yet, but I will say that um, Hudson has been working with Pablo for, gosh, a year and a half now, um, ensuring that his space has been designed along the way. And so um, we anticipate that he will actually be able to start construction prior to the building's PCO. And so uh, our hope is that uh, the opening of the supermarket and the opening of the residential building will either coincide or the supermarket will follow shortly thereafter. Um, but we're hopeful that there won't be a significant delay. Pablo, I don't so, think you have anything to add to that. So there's no priority um, for the um, grocery store that has benefited the community for so long um, <laughs> for them to be forward or, or at the front of your vision as you move forward with this, this, this plan. I was just wondering. We would absolutely love for the, or the supermarket to open exactly the same time as it is part of the building as a whole. It's not a standalone structure. Um, it, there are intertwined building systems. So I don't know that it could open ahead of it, but we will certainly work with Pablo and his team on the build out to try to ensure that it opens um, in as timely of a manner as possible. So you indicated there will be two segments to your property. So in order for the area in which Pablo's um, facility will be in, how is that being impacted? Because the, the drawings seem to have two separate buildings. So are you saying that when all of the facilities, both sections are completed, then we can anticipate the grocery store? Maybe open it simultaneously as you indicated, but maybe delayed further thereafter? So it's actually only one building. Um, okay. There's it, it sits atop a common podium, and the grocery store spans the entire site. So oh, okay, it's, it's very good. Thank under, you so much. Appreciate you. Yep. Uh, Mr. Wolfling, you had your hand up. Are you? Yeah, I was going to contribute to an earlier part of the discussion, but it kind of got resolved, so I'm not going to. I I I lower my hand. Got it. Understood. Miss Westerdahl. It looks as if she may be having some technical issues. Hold on. Let's let's give her a second. While we allow Miss uh, Westerdahl to reconnect, uh, we can welcome our chair, who Miss uh, Miss Moses just made it in. Good evening, Miss Moses. Uh, good evening. I want to thank you all for starting the meeting. Um, so you can continue until the end of this session and I'll listen. Co-chair. Okay, I'll be happy to. And Mia, thank you so much. I don't know what the problem is, but um, we can continue. Don't worry, not a problem. So um, how many more people do we have for questions here? Just one? Uh, we're, we're just waiting for Ms. Westerdahl to reconnect so that she can answer her question. Well, I, also, I also have a question. Yeah, I was going to ask if you had your hand back up. So mm -hmm. it's just Ms. Westerdahl, Ms. Boyd. Ms. Boyd, if you want to proceed while Ms. Westerdahl tries to reconnect. Yeah, I have two questions. The first question is, is that there's going to be a 22 uh, um, a tax abatement given for quote unquote affordable housing. And you mentioned that it's very going to be similar to the way that it was done at uh, Nice uh, and on uh, Flatbush Avenue. And I wanted to find out what nonprofit have you designated uh, for that, uh, for the affordable housing component to your project? Yes, thank you. Uh, you know, the affordable housing component is obviously very important. And I would just like to clarify. Um, the 626 Flatbush uh, project actually had a different uh, program. This is similar to what we did at 310 and 350 Clarkson. Um, and we have not yet identified a nonprofit to handle the affordable lease up. 
Um, in the past, we've worked with housing partnership. And uh, when we worked with them for the affordable lease up at 310 Clarkson, we made a concerted effort to do neighborhood outreach to ensure that existing residents of the neighborhood were aware of the lottery and were applying. We tabled at the farmer's market at SUNY Downstate. We, um, you know, put together flyers in, uh, I believe, in different languages and distributed them to neighborhood businesses, postcards, that kind of thing, because it was really important that for, to us that the neighborhood knew about this opportunity. And I, I have one more question to ask. It appears as if you have put in for land use applications and you have already submitted an environmental assessment statement. How is that proposal or that application, um, which is not started according to um, ECP, how, what changes are you anticipating? Because you're showing us one model as, which is an as of right, but this application indicates that you're now looking to change the as of right status. And so what is your anticipated changes that is now a part of this application that you have now sat there and, and submitted? Right, so um, the FRESH program requires a ULERP application. Um, it's been described as sort of ULERP light, if you will. Um, we still have to go through the process because there are zoning actions. Um, and so the two actions that we are requesting in our application are the 15 foot height increase, um, which we get for having the qualifying supermarket or are eligible for, I'm sorry, for having the qualifying supermarket. And there's um, a height uh, guideline for that. We have to maintain a 14 foot, I believe it's floor to floor height for the supermarket. So you, uh, the idea is that you get the bonus at the top of the building and then also additional square footage, which as noted in the presentation is about 1300 or 13,000 square feet. And that's all that's in this application. That is it. The rest of the building is as of right. Okay. And that increased height, is that going to be for both wings? Um, I can't recall right now. Um, I'm not sure if my colleague Sally knows the specifics of that one. Well, could you ask it because that's important, because you're asking for an increase. Understood. Sally's on right now. And she's yeah, hi. Um, I would, I will want to triple check to make sure that what I'm saying is correct. So I don't want to, I don't want to um, say anything that might be wrong. So I, I would, I would prefer to be able to answer that in a follow-up if you wouldn't mind, because it's a complicated massing of, of form. And we've been asked to make some changes during our review with city planning on, you know, a, a, about different issues. But um, I believe that the entire increase is act of height is actually on the side on the no strand side, but would you let us follow up with that so that we can? Yes, um, so you, you're, you're clear about the question that I'm asking. Yeah, you, uh, well, I believe the question you're asking is, is the bonus height that we're requesting in our in our uh, Euler request on both sides, on both Clove Road and No Strand, or is it just on one side or the other? Right. I'm wondering if it's on both wings because you, you, you described your development project. Yeah. Wings. right. So, so let us follow up and, and get the architects who really have, um, you know, the correct dimensions and everything on their drawings before. And, and when do you think you might be able to answer that question for us? Uh, we could do it this week in a, in a few days, I'm sure. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, thank you. Mia, who's next? Ms. Westerdahl? Yeah, hi. I missed the beginning of the presentation, so hopefully I can watch it on video. Uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> I live on uh, Sullivan. I live very close to the site, and I'm concerned and wondering. I, I hear that you're putting in double the parking, but I do know that Associated, which we desperately miss in the neighborhood, it was a great grocery store, with the additional um, the MTA is adding several bus routes to North Strand, moving from Bedford Avenue to, to North Strand. So it's gonna be quite a bit of increase in traffic there with the, uh, it sounds like a pretty massive development. So the parking, people use that 
use the associated and the parking was extremely convenient and helpful for a lot of people, especially our seniors. Could somebody mute their mic who's ever making the noise, please? Thank you. Somebody has their mic on. Can you mute it, please? Thank you. Um, so I'm wondering about the, the parking situation. If there's gonna be, a, it wasn't clear if there's gonna be an area for people who are going to the grocery store to park and leave. I'm also curious if there's gonna be EV, it's electric vehicle, charging stations there, if there's gonna be uh, indoor bike parking that's gonna be like micro mobility charging and how you're gonna deal with the, the increased traffic over there. It sounds like it's gonna be pretty, it doesn't sound good. And I'm also curious about Clove Road. Like I, I know there was like uh, quite a few things to fill out uh, about like what that usage was gonna be, if it's gonna be a park, how that road is, is gonna be used. I was under the impression that it's gonna be the park. I do know too that's near the precinct and uh, they need more parking. Are you gonna provide the precinct with parking? And what about the, um, there's also a, a car rental service over there that uses quite a lot of parking in the area. Like what's gonna happen? Is there gonna be neighborhood parking, EV charging? Um, and of course we want a lot of uh, super, ultra affordable units for our, our neighborhood. A lot of our, our seniors and people in this neighborhood have been losing housing and we want them back. So those are my questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you for those questions. Um, so as previously mentioned with the parking, we do have a significant um, parking. Uh, it's underground and we anticipate that it will be attended operated parking. Um, so the exact program of, you know, who it's for would be determined by the operator. Um, so I can't speak to exactly what that will look like when the building is operational. Um, and then um, regarding bike storage, we have an abundance of bike storage in the building for the residents as is required by zoning. Um, in the garage, I believe that we are planning for electric vehicle charging stations. Um, again, I believe that's a zoning requirement these days or sort of a future proofing zoning requirement. So we are um, planning for all of those things. And then um, I hear you regarding the affordable housing aspect of it. Um, we're still underwriting the project. So we are not you know, committing to the AMIs. Uh, I want to be completely upfront with you. This is 421A, it's option C, which is 130% AMI. But as I mentioned previously, in our experience, that's not really appropriate. And so we consciously make the effort to lower that AMI and widen the income bracket um, in sort of the uh, notion of providing workforce housing. Oh, and what about solar? Are you going to have any solar? solar? We are. Yep, we have solar on the roof. We have green roofs. Um, the project is um, both Energy Star and Lead Gold uh, targeted. And we're also participating in Con Ed's clean heat program. So all electric heating, um, uh, sustainability is a big priority for the Hudson companies. Okay, thank you very much. Mia, are there any other questions? Uh, Mr. Sword had his hand up and he, has had, uh, he hasn't had any, uh, a chance to speak for the evening. Okay, that would be the final question. I wanted one more question, please. Okay, Alicia. So is Jay Soren coming on or should Alicia? Yes, uh, may, I, may I proceed? Can you sure. hear me? Yes, Great, thank you. Yes, so, so my question is uh, to the developer. Um, it, it seems like you're looking for a, uh, um, an opinion, uh, you know, a vote of approval by the community board. There's a, there's a finite time in terms of when the community board will vote on it. Uh, in terms of uh, something in writing, something in paper, in terms of a breakdown, when will the developer provide something in writing that specifically breaks down how many units, what's the AMI, um, the, like, the square footage of the, of the uh, of the supermarket, how much is the parking, it, everything in specifics. Because for instance, or can we see the land use application that's filed? Uh, right now, I can't see that from the website, 
uh, can we see the environmental assessment state the statement that was filed January 15th? I can't see that. I know there's two zoning certifications, but in terms of documents ahead of time, um, can the community board have as much information that goes to the parking issue ahead of time? Because my concern is, um, I, I think I heard you say there's no parking for the supermarket. And many times there's a 10% ratio of the anticipated amount of traffic. So if, it, if you anticipate 250 people are gonna be in the store, uh, the super, uh, on one of the other projects like at Kingsborough, they have a 10% ratio. So if, if there could be some like real specifics in terms of how many parking spots, how many units, what's the AMI, everything that you have, if you can give the community board ahead of time uh, in order to get that vote, because uh, there's, a, there's a question as to whether or not uh, uh, there's a sufficient amount of parking also, and, and AMI units as well to get that uh, fresh start uh, uh, recommendation from the community board. So when, when, when do you think you guys would anticipate sending that? Is, is there like an email address where there's a certain contact person where people could ask questions and follow up from different committees, which may have an opinion? Uh, Jay, I'll answer that one. Uh, everything should be directed to the board office and the staff will communicate with the developer. Okay, but in terms of the, the information on the land use application, the environmental assessment, and, and the other numbers, is there any other numbers on, let's say, so there's no parking for the uh, supermarket? Is that right? So, I'm sorry, I may have misspoken. To be clear, we are abiding by what is required by zoning for the residential and the fresh supermarket. Um, I think there's a question sort of programmatically uh, about what that will actually look like. The parking is no longer surface parking. Um, you know, I think we're accustomed to the prior associated supermarket where it had 80 surface parking spots, which is, you know, a rarity in Brooklyn. And um, so this will be a garage and it's anticipated that it'll be attended parking. And so I can't say for certain at this time, you know, how the attended parking will operate. But we hear very much how important this is to the community. And so, you know, certainly when we're in discussions with operators, we will note that to them. Right. But, but there's also an issue of disclosure because if the community board's going to vote on something. Excuse have, me. Excuse um, me. Okay. I, I have to jump uh, in now. Okay. Okay. Excuse sure. Me. My, my, excuse right, me. my final question is well, what's the square footage? Well, hold, hold, on hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Thank you. What's well, the square footage one, of the super? Hold on, Mr. J. Hold on. Okay. We are not having this. No, no, but you, you're not you're not conducting it. Warren is. Warren is conducting it right okay, now. What I'm Warren saying is conducting meetings, so you can't okay, interrupt. Everybody. Excuse me. Hold on. Jay, Mr. Sorry. Excuse me. Jay, thank excuse you very me. much. I'm going to return this to Pat. Pat, you're now no, the chair again. Okay, Warren, what I'm saying to what I'm Warren is it's okay. What I'm saying to you is that if you ask a person to present a question, that's what we expect. We don't expect three paragraphs and somebody challenging. All I'm saying to you is, Warren, you're doing a good job. I'm saying to you, Mr. J, one question. We got to move on to two other people because I have something else on my agenda. That's what's, all I'm saying. What's the square footage of the, of the supermarket? What's so, the square footage? Yeah, the square footage of the supermarket is over 21,000 square feet. All right, thank you. Let's move on. Pat, you want to take over? No, you finish out. Okay, so uh, I believe Alicia had a question and then we're done. Oh, I just for clarity's sake, so everyone is, understands what this application is about. It does not go through the EULA process. This is a non EULA process. So it doesn't go to the community board for a vote. It doesn't go to the borough president for a vote. This is a notification of telling us what they planned on doing and they only are seeking approval and it can only get approval from the uh, city, the Department of City Planning Commissioner. And that's the person who will approve their application. Of course, if we find something that we object to, we can always communicate to DCP and the commissioner about our objections if we feel something is inappropriate but it's not a ULIP application. And so we'll okay. not be requesting for a vote, but I do have a question. Um, well, if it's not a ULIP matter, why are you asking a question? Excuse me. In they other do. words, what you're saying is that this is this is coming before us so we don't, it's not supposed to. No, so I didn't say that it was not supposed to. 
I we didn't say it was not supposed to. I said it's not going to be, we will not be voting on this. They okay. do have to come and disclose. Okay, well, we can ask your question quickly, please. Well, if you, if you would stop. Well, it's your third question, so go ahead. You said that there's nine stories in your application. Will the additional 15 feet now make it 10 and a half stories? Or is it the final, what will be the final height of the building? Nine That's stories it. is inclusive of the 15 feet. Okay, thank, and what's the height of the building, the final height of that building? Oh, Sally, do you know that one? Um, well, no, I can't give you the exact, I can't give you the exact height. I, I can't do the math in my head fast enough, but we can, but we can. So will that be another question that you can yeah. answer? Okay, yeah. so we now have two questions. <laughs> okay, Great. thank you very much. You. All right, uh, so let's move on with the meeting. Uh, the first thing that we should do is, and thank you very much for your presentation. And Pablo, thank you for the presentation. Um, you know, the, the board office is, is there to work with you and for you. And if more questions come in, we'll be um, conveying them to you. And we look forward to the answers to the two questions. So moving on, uh, Mia, could you do a roll call, please? Okay. I can take it from here. Thank you so much, Warren. Okay, bye-bye. Um, I, I just wanted to make one correction, though. Um, it is a ULOP. The reason that it's a ULA project at this point is because they're dealing, and they can correct me if I'm wrong, because they're dealing with square footage. Right. And so it, it is, in fact, a ULA project at this point. But Am I not, correct? Yes, but it's not, it's not a part of the ULA process in that they don't have to get, they're not seeking a vote from us. That's what it is. That's the difference. They're not going to be going through the ULA process where it goes to votes there is a part of the process because they're asking for the rezoning, but in this particular instance, the only person that approves it is the Department of City Planning, the commissioner, and they're the persons who approve it. It will not go through a EULA process where everyone gets a chance to weigh in and then vote on it. That's okay. it. If, if, well, if I may, Ms. Uh, Moses. Yes. Uh, my you're, understanding, you're, unless something's changed. No, you are both right. Uh, we have filed a ULERP application. Um, and so that is why it is a ULERP process. And Alicia, you are also right in that it is not really a full ULERP in that there is a community board vote. So you are both right on that front. Um, we, uh, as I'm sure you may know, DCP is very slow moving these days. Um, and so we've actually been working with them on this for a very long time. And we hope that it will actually formally come to the community board um, in a short amount of time. Um, you know, we wanted to do this um, so everyone was aware. We know how important the supermarket is to the neighborhood, to the community board. And, um, you know, Hudson prides ourselves on being good neighbors and we want to do the same thing here. And so we didn't want any of this to be opaque or, you know, we didn't want the first time you saw the project to be once that ULERP application actually gets submitted to the community board. Mrs. Moses, your audio is out. Okay, let me fill in uh, while Pat's getting it, her tech together. Can you hear me? Uh, now we can, yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm just having all kinds of problems here. But anyway, exactly. can we do, uh, Suki, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Pat. Okay, can you do a roll call, please? Uh, sure. Uh, Pat you. Moses? Here. Warren Burke? Here. Tom Thomas? Tom Thomas, Tom's here, I see him. Here, here. Uh, John Craver. I am here. Uh, Esteban Haron. Uh, here. And Suki Cheong is here. Uh, by the way, I see Valerie Fleming's hand raised. Was she? 
And you didn't mention Nicola Cox. Did you call me? Oh, I'm so sorry, Nicola. Nicola Cox. I'm here. Um, sorry, I still have my hand up because I had wanted to ask one okay, question. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay, we have to get some order here and people like speaking all, all out of turn and, and no, if you call we my just name, somebody, that's the only we, can, I spoke. we can do that. Huh, excuse me? She had called my name. That's the only reason I spoke. And I said I was going to, I didn't realize my hand was still up and I will send my question to the to the board. That's all I wanted to say, okay. especially because she called my name. Okay, thank you. But you, you'll you still have an opportunity if you still want to say something when I get down to part of the agenda. If you still have a concern where it says community residents concerned, then you can still speak. So I'm not shutting you down. I just want okay. to get some kind of order yes, here. Ma yes, ma'am. Do your thing. Yeah. Still keep your still keep your question in mind. Okay, thank you. So since that's the case, I'm going to go to you now for community resident concern. <laughs> you can speak now. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is just a small follow-up question with regard to the developer, if she's still on the line. You indicated yeah. that there was going to be some community, a community facility. And I just wanted to know what did that look, what does that look like and how many square feet would that be? Sure. Um, thank you for that question. And I'm sorry I didn't highlight more about this in the presentation. Um, we have a 770 square foot community facility. It fronts on no trend. Um, and we don't have an operator identified yet, and that's actually something that we'd really uh, love for the community's input on. You know, we would love for this space to go to something that the community really needs. Um, you know, sort of with the community facility, it is a discounted rent, um, you know, per uh, instead of traditional retail. And so um, it's our hope that we will get um, an organization or a use in there that is something that the community really needs. So if anybody has any suggestions, um, you know, of any neighborhood organizations or anything that are potentially looking for space, albeit in a few years, unfortunately, as construction takes a long time, um, I would encourage you to please send those with your questions to the board and they can pass them along to us. Perfect, okay. thank you. Thank you. Okay, we wanna thank you for coming. Um, we're gonna now go into our, you know, our meeting. Um, so you, if you would like to excuse yourself, you can. Once again, um, I apologize for having computer problems, but we welcome you. And um, if we have any other questions, it will we'll send it out from our board office, community board office. But thank again, you very thank much. You. Yeah, thank you everyone for your time tonight, and we look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let me go first into um, the committee business. Um, uh, everyone hopefully got uh, a revision of the letter that was to be sent out to, um, that was sent out from our subcommittee in reference to some uh, six questions that you wanted to be asked by, and who was that, city planning. So everybody got an opportunity, hopefully, to read the letter that we wanted to go out from the community board office. Are there any objections to the letter? Um, is it possible that you can read the six questions for the residents who have not seen the letter? Um, they're kind of long, so we could send it to you. Um, yeah, I, I'd be okay. happy to send it. So we're not okay. going to read this because it's a long, kind of long. It came okay. out from, it came out from, okay, let me just explain where it came from. It came out from the subcommittee. So basically right. it wasn't really discussed here. It was basically discussed in the subcommittee and evidently they voted to bring it forward to the the entire okay. is there anybody that can summarize very quickly the, the question yeah I right, see it too. Right okay, now, if i send it to her can you send you it can to send me it to her, but right now right now yeah, yeah of course can. Suki, can you send it to me now can you send it to me too please Teresa, yeah is it okay Teresa? is it okay if i send it to them listen, pat listen 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 okay i'm really getting a little annoyed here <laughs> first of all we're in the middle of we're in the middle of a committee the ULIP committee 
business meeting. So I would appreciate that you not do that and we'll have no problem sending you information. But right now, this is something that I sent to us for us to vote on to send out because it evidently was a long discussion for about a month and a half in the subcommittee. So my question to the, the ULIP committee, is there any objections to this letter going out? If there are, please speak now. So the only three that wasn't on the committee is myself and um, who else wasn't? Warren and I think one other person. Yes, but Pat, I was not on the committee. I did not attend most of the committee meetings. I didn't, I don't, I mean, and so because this is a committee and you're about to vote on something, because I'm sitting here in this meeting, I should know what that voting is. If somebody can summarize, you don't have to read verbatim, but maybe Suki can summarize each one of these questions. Oh, but they're too long. That's what I'm saying. That's what Suki sent it to her. They're too long, but I'm asking um, the yes, committee. Suki. Okay. I'll, I'll... Is there any objection for it going out at this point? I'm speaking specifically to the ULA committee, not the sub, because the subcommittee presented it to us. So now we need to either vote yay or nay. If there are any objections, if there's not, then I'm going to recommend that the letter be sent out. So made. Me? I can hear you, Warren. Warren said so moved. Oh, okay, great. So Amia. I'll second that. Yeah. Thank you. Mia, you have yeah. a copy of the draft? I have a copy of the draft. Okay. So, so Pat, you may want to ask for discussion. Okay. Okay. Y'all want, was there any discussion? No. So can we move forward to recommend that the letter be sent out? Mia? You want to call the vote? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you guys are going to call, a, uh, you're going to call the vote for the committee, committee members? Yes, we can call the vote. Suki? We're a little mixed up today. Suki, Suki, can we call a vote for for the letter to be sent out? I think, you know, I think she may be forwarding the letter at this the, point. The Excuse me? Okay. I think she, I think she may I be think, sending I out she may be her email meeting. sending out the letter. Um you could call it for us then. Sorry, Tom Thomas. Yes. John Craver. Yes. Pat Moses. Yes. Uh, Warren Burke. Yes. Esteban Heron. Yes. Nicola Cox. Yes. And Suki Chong, yes. Thank you. <clears throat> so it passes we're going to recommend that the letter be sent out from the community board and also I want to bring to your attention that on this is for uh, the city of yes they're doing a public information session on Monday March the 20th at 7 p.m. And on Tuesday, March 28th at 7 p.m. And if you don't have that information, um, 
Mia, can you send it out? Because we would like to attend, but on the 28th, I know that um, we basically have a board meeting. So anyone else that can attend those, attend those two ses sessions, we'd appreciate it. I'll send it out. Thank you. Can I, can I please make one suggestion? Um, you're addressing this to the city of Yes team. However, Mayor Adams has just appointed uh, a person to be in charge of a new office that will be dealing with the text amendments. So instead of addressing it to the city of Yes team, you address it directly to her because she will be the person who's now in charge of um, the whole entire, the whole entire yes process. So that's my only suggestion to the letter that it just change who it is. Because once you, you send it to the city of yes team, only God knows where it's going to go. You now have a person who's already been appointed. A new office has been created and she has been appointed the person who's, who will be handling these, this issue, all the text amendments. And so I would suggest that. Well, Mia, you know, have you received any information from the Department of City Planning about this? Um, no, not that I know of. I'll double check with Don. It was in the newspaper. It was yeah. Mayor Adams okay. creating three. I mean, I think as far as far as we've been told publicly, the uh, address to the City of Yes team is what they're what they're expecting. So I think we can send it there. And if there's also another email address, we can send it there as well. It doesn't hurt. Right. That's what I'm suggesting as well, that you send it to the Department of City Planning and direct it towards her. And so that she she gets it directly because she's the one who's now in charge of the new office. I mean, what what I what I had heard is that they're appointing someone um, to be in charge of community engagement, but that they didn't say anything about City of Yes. She's already been appointed and her duties and responsibilities, according to the newspaper article, is to sit there and get the text amendments passed. That's her duty and responsibility. She's going to be in charge of, the, of all, she's, this is, this is her new role. This is her new role. And they had stated that from the beginning that they wanted to create a new office and this is what he did. If you want me to send you the article, I'd be willing, I'll be glad to send you the article as well as, as a matter of fact, I'll do that. I'll send you and, and everyone else the article as well as the name of the person, so. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Okay, great. As I was talking, I guess nobody heard me. Um, well, we already had, it already passed that it's going to be sent out. Mia, you could just, whoever the correct person is, can you, would it be a problem that we could, we can send it to the, whoever the correct person is. And no, again, thank you. Yeah, and if you, can, it, um, if you can just CC the rest of the committee as well. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Well, when she, when, because they have to put their heading on it, so we would get a copy. And especially it would go back into your, it would go to all of us to read. Right. Okay. So, okay. So thank you. Let's move on. But again, um, for the subcommittee, please, if you don't have the information for um, March the 20th and March the 28th, I mean, we, you really need to be at that public information session because what's going to happen, according to my understanding, is that um, they're going to have a public review on April 24th. So if you can, if you don't have the information, uh, we need all that information to go out um, in reference to these two sessions. And Mia, is there any problem with the, the, the community getting that information? Uh, no, we can uh, circulate the information. Uh, because, yeah, I would like them to have the information in so that they can follow along with us. Yes. Okay, so thank you. So we're going to move on. On um, another announcement I have, on April the 4th, which is our next meeting, um, the Deputy Director of the Land Use 
um, from the borough office is going to be here to review their recommendations um, as a part of their comprehensive planning effort. So again, that's going to be on April the 4th at 7 p.m. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, can you say that again? I'm, say that. Okay. I'm sorry. On April 4th, mm -hmm. um, the Deputy Director of the Land Use Committee for the Borough President's Office is going to oh. be here at our meeting on that day so that they can review with us a draft of their recommendation for their comprehensive planning efforts. And I'm not quite sure what they are. Okay, um, moving on, before I move on. Excuse me, do, do you have the name of yes. that person? Um, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, I don't have it in front of me. Um, we can give you that name. Okay. But I don't have I don't have the I don't have his name in front of um, me. Also, we uh, I think we'd ask Mia to provide us with any updates from the borough president's office um, after the release of the underlying conditions report. Was there anything from them? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, I'll okay. double check through the emails and touch base with Dante in the morning if there is any additional okay. information. Have you reached out to the borough president's office yet to find out if there were any updates beyond what was in the underlying conditions report? Um, I'll touch base with Dante because uh, he was the one that had a conversation with the BP's office. Not myself. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Sure okay. Thing. Thank you, Suki. So, again, um, um, hold on a second. Right now, I'm specifically right now, um, before I'm talking to, I'm, I'm specifically talking to the committee at this point. Committee members, do you have any questions about what I just said to you or announced? I mean, if you need any information, we can get it to you. There's not a problem. So, okay, so there's none. Uh, Warren, do you, you want to say something? I don't have any questions. Okay. Thank you. Okay, but before I go to before I go to the residents' concerns, I want uh, people. Can you please put down the next meeting date again? Is April the fourth? Just in case I forget it, because I'm a little mixed up this evening. So now, um, before we go to the community residents. Does a committee members, do you have any concerns? If you do, I see one, Esteban. Hey, yes, uh, concern, but actually more just like a, a, a quick update. Um, okay. If, if folks are familiar with uh, the governor's housing compact uh, that she put out with her budget that did things like uh, did, uh, did away with zoning requirements around uh, uh, transit lines, like within a half mile of the MTA, it uh, imposed um, major fines on communities that didn't uh, increase their density by three percent, uh, you know, every number of years. Anyway, it's a uh, very much uh, taking out the the community board from the from the process. Uh, today, the Senate and the Assembly came out with their uh, with their proposed budgets, and both of them categorically rejected everything that had to do with review um, in terms of uh did basically putting putting the, the the power back into the community's hands um and so it's a very clear message from the legislature that uh that they're not going to let uh you know the governor sort of run over the uh the existing uh the existing so it's yeah it's 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 good news and uh but i think it's also really important that uh continue to call if you know any senators or assembly members if you have any connections to them just uh Make sure that they know that we're not, uh, you know, that that we like having review over <laughs> over land use matters, and that uh, that they should hold firm on that on that stance, because because um, otherwise, you know, the the governor's plan really takes all of the uh, all of the even even just basic oversight of of uh, you know of land use out of our out of our hands. So um, yeah, that's the update. 
Can I ask a question of, of him about that? Go ahead. So I just need to be clear. She actually put a proposal in the legislation that any development being built within a quarter of a mile from half a mile, a half a mile would be exempt from an environmental review. Essentially, what she said was, uh, so there would be these like targets, and if you didn't, if a particular community, say like Community Board Nine, didn't meet their density targets for that particular year, then uh, there would be a builder's remedy, which would mean that the builders could just propose any, literally anything they want uh, for within the half mile and the, that the state would approve it. Um, it's, yeah, it's absolutely astonishing. Um, oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's, uh, you know, it was done in coordination with, uh, with the mayor's office and, uh, and it's, you know, just this, this basic push to, to take all review out of, out of, uh, out of the hands of the community. And it's not like we have anything more than advisory, but like even that delay is too much for them apparently. So, uh, so yeah, that's, but yeah, it was wow. stunning when it came out. It was wow. like, oh. <laughs> you gotta, okay, you gotta point. send it to me, Esteban, please. Yeah, if you well, can send it to me, cause I gotta read it for myself. Absolutely. Thank you. Excuse me. Hey, can, uh, you, this is Warren. can yeah. you send it to the, in, I'm sorry, Warren. Can you send uh, the information or, or how to locate the information to the entire ULUP? Yeah, committee? I would love to. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm sorry. Um, Warren and then you know, Warren. I've been reading about this and Esteban is totally right. But more important, we're spending time on the city of Yes, which I certainly support. But this circumvents that and it absorbs it in terms of my mind. Yeah. So if if the powers that be, meaning our knowledgeable people like Esteban, have recommendations for action for the board, let's talk about it and or do it. Uh, because this is this is very serious. This this just this just negates everything on the local level, and it's very, very dangerous. Thank you. The other thing that the other thing that they did, and just I forgot to include this, is they both both the, the Senate and the Assembly have basically said we're not going to deal with 421A as part of this budget negotiation, which is a really good thing because otherwise they would have traded that off for any possible, you know, any of the the things that have that have been in that in the governor's budget by doing that. And remember that the legislature has a supermajority; they can veto the governor, uh, right as of right now. So, uh, so what they're saying is, we're not going to make that part of this negotiation. We're going to deal with that in June at the end of the session, and that's really, really good for us because that means that we're not, you know, they're, they're, the budget is one bill, right? It's one thing that they vote on. You can't like take things out, put things in. Once it's there, it's there, and that's it's called a big ugly because everything gets thrown in there, and you can't do anything about it once it's set. So it's really good that 421A is not going to be traded off as a, you know, as I don't, you know, I'll, we'll still have to fight for a better, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with 421A, but it would have really complicated things to put that in the middle of all this. Um, so, yeah, Esteban, okay, I agree you. totally. I think what's going on here is exactly how you're playing it and what the legislative did is eliminated a negotiating point in terms of the governor. So that's very positive. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And if you will get that information to to us so that we can, you know, be up to date also. Um, yeah. Nicola? Hi, regarding the um, Borough Hall coming in April to talk about their comprehensive plan, do we have any plans on putting together a list of push back, ask questions, get some insights on our, our Is it just me or is she frozen? No, she's frozen. 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 Yeah, she's frozen. Okay, so we'll come back to her. But I think she a comment on that. What the oh, comment is, is, is Warren, I'm trying to she's frozen so when she I, comes know, back. I, just want, I know, I just Go want ahead. to say that in order to have what Nicola is asking for, which I totally agree with, 
is to hear what the issues are. Thank you. Yes. Well, and that's what. Oh, hold on. It was right now. It was just a committee member, and I, because that's what you. Okay, you I'm back. That so someplace. I heard what you said. Uh, you wanted to know if we had any information in advance. Am I correct? Well, we have the plan. Right. We know what we know what their um, at least what their background information their study was about. So based on the study, I know that Suki's on. I know Suki had highlighted a few concerns, at least during our city of yes meeting of where she saw some discrepancies between what they presented as facts about our community and what she thought, thought were some of the facts about our community and where. Um, where we thought as a community board and a ULIP committee were some of the concerns regarding, for instance, the fact that we need to focus on protecting the existing affordable housing. We're one of the few areas of Brooklyn that has had a significant amount of affordable housing, and we know that our affordable housing is more and more under attack, and we're losing it. So instead of focusing on or to me, more of the focus for our particular community is regarding preserving the existing affordable housing versus trying to build new housing units, a few units in, in, in conjunction with market rate. We have enough market rate in this area. We need more affordable. We need to reserve the affordable housing. So again, that's just one of the topics I wanted to know if we as a community, as a, as a ULIP committee or the um, City of Yes subcommittee would be putting together some of our thoughts before we present so that we have some, instead of just sitting and listening, we could provide some feedback real time during this meeting with the Borough Hall in April. Okay. Hey, so Warren, Nicole, thank you. I agree totally with what you're saying. And if we have information, uh, as to what's being proposed, let's let's take a look at it. And I agree with the whole concept of asking the questions once we have the details. Thank you. Um, that's what I was going to say, uh, Nicola. I don't really have. I, I'm going to get to you, um, Mr. Thomas. Nicola, I don't really have any information. But if you can forward something to us so that we would have an insight, I, I'd appreciate that because I really don't have any information. Uh, as to what they're even proposing. And then we would, at least in our heads, we will definitely listen to what they have to say. And that's what we're all about. Because it's not just what we think, it's what we, we're, we're, we're thinking of in terms of the whole community. So if you have whatever you have, if you can make it, can forward it to us, we'd appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Thomas? Yes, Esteban was the distance from the transit facility uh, a quarter mile in in radius. I think I'm looking right now. I think it was a half mile. Half um, mile. Half mile in radius. Yeah, I think so. Let me let me double check real quick. Because you know a diameter of one mile is a huge amount of space. That's a lot of development. Yes. <laughs> it's one mile mm -hmm. twenty blocks. Say one again. mile is twenty blocks, right? Yeah. If you do yeah, so what it says, what it says specifically is it will require that localities with rail stations run by the MTA undertake a local rezoning or higher density multifamily development within half a mile of the station unless they already meet the density level. That's but it doesn't say mile, diameter. That's a one mile diameter. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Good Lord. Yes, that's, that's a good piece of the city. Yes. And this is for the, 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 uh, Esteban, what was the density level that they were targeting? Um, three percent, uh, three percent every three years. I I'd heard no, I'd heard it was actually like number of persons per square mile or per acre, or number of units per per acre or something like that. It might be what the original, from what I recall, the original said. Um, uh, hold on, looking here. Um, I uh, it's fifty dwelling units per acre as the okay. requirement. Yeah. Okay. And I, I actually, I ran the math on this because I thought that you guys were going to make me present on it like three weeks ago. Uh, our district is at 39.9 .9 dwelling units per acre, but this doesn't discount the two community districts, any schools or public facilities. So I think of the transit served within this half mile, I don't actually think it's going to be an issue. I mean, 
it's not going to pass so it doesn't matter but this wouldn't largely affect the fabric of the spaces in a half a mile from the two and five trains or the the three four trains right because we're already very dense as it is with this the is, it's meant for long island yeah yeah we're the densest populated area in brooklyn so i doubt anybody could get close to us we are not but we're close and, and who is because it's my understanding that we are <laughs> Unless Williamsburg beat us like within the last five years. Yeah. Oh, okay. Again, yeah. development, yes. Not development, density. Well, I, I the last numbers that I saw in terms of um, population per square mile were still the highest in Brooklyn. But I think it's it's possible that in terms of dwelling units per acre, Williamsburg might some sections of Williamsburg might be higher. Oh, because of all of the development. Right. But, uh, but those apartments are basically a lot of them. I think the, I think they have a thirty percent vacancy rate on. That's so, possible. So what are what are we talking about? Are we talking about density, or are we talking about residential units? I. I mean, I don't know, Andrew, I haven't looked at residential units per acre. I've only looked at population density per acre. So what I know is that our district is the highest in Brooklyn, but followed by community boards eight and 14, which are adjacent to us. So Hello. it's just a very dense corridor. Hello, can y'all hear me now? Listen, yes. I keep going in and out, so it's just ridiculous. <laughs> but let me move on. I mean, I'm like uh, in and out of this situation here. Um, I'm going to. We got to close out. Pat, I had an, I had another question actually. Pat. Yeah, I know, but just yeah, hold on. I, I didn't get an opportunity because okay. I was listening to y'all because my computer is just not working correctly this evening. So I'm going to go to Suki, and then to Jay, and then after that we we're, we're, we're going to close down. And I also want to say that. For the people that are getting the information out to us, when I tell you I'm trying to add your fucking number because you got four numbers. Kyrie, oh, put yourself on mute. Uh, Kyrie, can you hear me now? Sorry, <laughs> just trying. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can hear yes. you. I don't know yes. what's going on, but I mean, <laughs> that it's almost time to end this meeting. So, okay, and I'm getting ready to close out because I'm getting closed out anyway. Suki, so, you wanted to say something? Yeah, so I just wanted to say with regards to the borough president's underlying conditions report, I, I did submit um, feedback to the public forum so I can share that with you. Uh, there were several points that obviously there were some land use and housing issues that I looked at, but uh, definitely Warren, you should take a look at where he says like number of jobs created. The claim is that we're one of the lowest job creators in Brooklyn. Um, also schools, they're, they're saying that we have a very low capacity utilization rate, meaning that we just, you know, the schools are, are physically empty compared to what the capacity is supposed to be, um, which is, is something that I've see, seen as well. Uh, I, I took a look at the Blue Book. Um, there, there's something from the Department of Education called the Blue Book. Uh, health, asthma is, is something that um, has been, asthma rates is something that's been raised. Um, they did they did a focus group uh, um, for the public. Alicia was there also. So they did they did breakout groups. And um, my breakout group actually included someone from CB9. Um, and she was saying that she was asking, can we is is there any way of limiting density in our community? Because all of this density is affecting my mental health. She was like, I, you know, I'm working from home right now. And you know, it's just okay, all these people you, around. Suki, we will read it. We'll yeah, read no, it no, no. We'll I'm just telling you what happened at the at the at the forum, which is that that's not in the report. This is feedback from the public. 
right? So she was saying that she was asking if there's a way to limit density in our community because it's affecting her mental health and like construction. She's, she's like, there's a construction site near me and it's driving me nuts, this and that. So, um, and then somebody else who I think was from District 17 was saying also, why do we never um, hear about these construction projects before they happen? So that's just, just to let you know what some of the public feedback has already been. And then my second question, um, is there any so, update on the, just, 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 just let me finish because this is important. Is there any update on the Carroll Street rezoning, the one that's to the north of the spice factory because that's pretty big as well and I, and I think it covered multiple sites right does can anyone give an update on that well first of all um I'm not I don't even know what you're talking about in terms of the Carroll Street update but um at this point this is listen let me let me so I don't so that I don't seem rude let me just explain myself when we have an agenda we try to go by the agenda and we also try to ensure that everybody gets something to say. So if one person is talking 10 to 15 minutes, another person is not going to get in. And I'm going to be very honest with you. I don't take my minutes up and I don't take my meetings all the way all night long. If we start on time, we may have to table something and then take it up in the next meeting because we're not going to sit all night and discuss the same things over and over again. So if there's any information that you want us to read, we are more than welcome. We will read that information and then we will bring it up for discussion. Can can the subcommittee work on the questions? They could, of course, that's what that's why we have the sub because in this particular meeting, you you really given an overview. So the subcommittee is also responsible to get us some minutes out so that we can also see them also. Thank you. Um, we're going to go to Jay. Well, yes. hold on a second, Jay, before you. So you said you had one more question or something. Yeah, um, this rezoning that's taking place to the north of the Spice Factory site, uh, Alicia had mentioned it, Esteban had mentioned it. Are there any updates on that? And, and no, how many there, sites there's nothing there. I, we, you know, we went to the second department, the second department, uh, overturn the lower court's decision. We filed you know, an appeal. The Court of Appeals did not allow us to appeal it. So it's now an as of right. The only issue that's facing them at this point is that if they want to take advantage of the, the FRESH program, okay. which would allow them to have an additional 15 feet, well, it would be at that point that we could muster up some more opposition to granting them any additional more heights than okay. what they how covered. how many can you remind us again how many sites it covers uh, i remember it one covers of the three sites it okay. covers it covers a very large large site um that is very open that you can see there's another site behind the precinct the smaller site and then there's another small site connected to that but it the, doesn't go, cover any occupied buildings. No, does it, it does. Okay. Yes, it does. It, it does, does cover occupied buildings. Yes, it does. So there okay, is that's a, that's very concerning. Well, it's a, the, okay, it's so, a it is it, a model for destroy. Okay. And we I have a, can I ask a question as well, Pat? Do you mind? Go ahead. Quick. Um, Alicia, they still have to do a ULERP for the the affordable housing part that's going to be done through HPD, correct? Well, I, if they, if not Europe, no, not HPD. HPD doesn't require Europe. Oh, I thought they, I thought they, I thought they had to do that as the part only of the... thing that they would have to do would be the fresh program, and they would have to do the, basically what this group does. But they would probably not tell us anything until the application was filed. But we definitely would want the CB nine to keep us informed so that we can make sure we weigh in on that. Even there's no vote, but we can weigh in on it. So we can get, garnish up some opposition so they don't get that additional 15 feet. And do they also have vested 421A rights? Um, yes, they do, because they violated the temporary restraining order yep. and they put the foundation in, but without the 
being in effect is sitting there. They're probably, that's probably what they're waiting for. They're probably waiting for that to come back on, yep. on board so they can get that additional monies. Um, and that would make sense. So Okay, so they it, still have to do an environmental assessment because of the 421A. Oh, well, I don't, uh, and if they do, what, 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 they can't, it can't be any more vigorous than the original one. So what, <laughs> you know, come on, guys, we, we, we fought it in a court. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and we did get an update on it. Again, thank you, um, okay. Jay, and then we're going to close out. Jay? Yes. Can the uh, the letter, the recommendation letter, um, number one, is is that going to be to the city of yes? Is that going to be voted upon at the community board, number one? And number two, uh, can that letter be posted to the community board nine website so that the public could see it since it's basically going to be uh, the opinion of the community board? Um, uh, it, it's not going to be. It's not an okay, opinion. But... It's just questions. Okay, hold on. I, I, okay, I, I, I was going to say, no, it oh, does so just, not it, go to the full, it, it, excuse me, yeah, right. Nicola okay. is right. It does not go to the full community board at this point. We were just voting on to send out the letter because they're only asking questions. They're not giving a position one way or the other at this okay. point. So okay. it's I just would, a matter of questions. So it does not need to go to the full board. Okay, I, I would draw that. Okay. And and I think that that's reasonable because otherwise it's just it delays things anyway. Right. It's only questions. They're either going to answer the questions, and once the once the subcommittee takes a look at what the answers are, then if we got to bring something forward to the uh, to the entire community board, we can. Okay. Um, we're going to close out. And once again. I apologize. That means I need to go out and buy a new computer or something because I was in and out. And I just want to say to um, any other uh, community members, I can't see everybody, but is there any other community members that would like to say something before I close out? Okay. Mm. Uh, just want to thank you for moving around the meeting quickly. I appreciate that, Pat. Pat, you need to give Fred some lessons. Yeah. <laughs> Those three, four hour meetings are a little rough. <laughs> right, we can't hear you, Pat. We can't hear you. Yeah, her audio is out again. Clean the cache. Hey, so I'll take over. Um, thank you all for coming. Do I have a motion to dismiss this meeting? So moved. Second. 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 Okay. Any discussion? We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Good night, Mrs. Moses. Good night, everyone. Yes, good, good night, night everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.